Hi, Mr. Richards here. Let's review Unit 6, Lesson 18, Practice Problems. Elena is designing a logo in the shape of a parallelogram. She wants the logo to have an area of 12 square inches. She draws bases of different lengths and tries to compute the height for each. Write an equation Elena can use to find the height, h, for each value of base, b. Well, typically, area of a parallelogram is equal to base times height. Now, we're trying to solve here, it says, to find the height. And so what can we do then to get our height alone? Well, divide by b. And so that leaves us then with an area divided by the base is equal to the height as that cancels out. Now, what do we know? We know the area is 12 square inches. So 12 divided by the base is going to equal the height. Once we have that equation then, we can use it to find the height of a parallelogram with a base of one and a half inches by taking 12 divided by one and a half to equal the height. Notice, b was our base, one and a half goes in for b our base. And we take 12 divided by one and a half, we get eight inches equals our height. Han is planning to ride his bike 24 miles. If he rides at a rate of 3 miles per hour, how long will it take? Well, 24 divided by 3 equals 8 hours. 4 miles per hour. All right, 24 divided by the 4 equals 6 hours. 6 miles per hour. 24 divided by 6 equals 4 hours. Now, write an equation that Han can use to find the time, or t, the time it will take to ride 24 miles, if his rate in miles per hour is represented by r. What have we done so far? It looks like we took our distance and we were dividing it by our rate of speed, and that was equaling our time. And so it says find the time, and that's what our equation is finding, equals t. So we're looking at 24 divided by our rate was equal to our time. On graph paper, Draw a graph that shows t in terms of r for a 24-mile ride. And so we're, we're going to need to come over here and let's first do a table. Well, if we have r as our input and t as our output, what happens when we put in 1 for time? Well, or I'm sorry, 1 for rate. 24 divided by 1 is 24. You put in 2. 24 divided by 2 is 12. You put in 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8. 24 divided by 4 is 6. Um, what are some other easy numbers we can divide? 24 divided by 6 is 4. 24 divided by 8 is 3. And then 24 divided by 12 is 2. And 24 divided by 24 is 1. And now if we had graph paper, we could sketch a graph here where we could say count our rate down here by 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and let's sneak in a 12 here. I'm not going to get all the numbers in our graph. And we'll do the same thing for time over here. We'll go well, that's a, let's fix that real quick. That's way too high. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. And I'll plot the points. Where rate was 2, time was 12. Where rate was 3, time was 8. So kind of in between here. When rate was 4, time was 6. When rate was 6, time was 4. When rate was 8, time was 3. When rate was uh, 12, time was 2. It's kind of looks like a little bit of a curve here. And that's how you could graph that. 
And as we go to question three, the graph of the equation v equals 10s to the third power contains the points 280 and 4640. Create a story that is represented by this graph. Well, let's say Joey and John. Each build a tower of 10 cubes. And that's where that 10 is coming in. Joey's cubes have edge length two and John's have an edge length of four. They use volume equals 10 S cubed to compute the volume. Of their towers. Because normally volume equals side cubed is the volume for a cube. But since that 10 is involved, that's where the 10 cubes come in. Now, what do the points mean in the context of this equation? Well, 280, again, we kind of talked about that, but that was 2 for the edge length, and 80 then would be the volume. Same thing with the 4, 640. The 4 was the edge length of the cube, and the 640 would be the volume. All right, let's continue on. You find a brass bottle that looks really old. When you rub some dirt off the bottle, a genie appears. The genie offers you a reward. You must choose one, $50,000 or a magical $1 coin. Now, this coin will turn into two coins on the first day, four coins on the second day, four coins will double to eight coins on the third day. The genie explains the doubling will continue for 28 days. Question A here. Write an equation that shows the number of coins n in terms of uh, the day d. Well, in order to do that, it might be helpful first uh, to see what's going on. And I think maybe a table could help us with that. And so we're going to go to b first here uh, in order to help us with a. If we look at d as the number of days, and we look at n as the number of coins, we're going to be going all the way to 15 days here. So hold on tight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Going to need more room. <laughs> 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 days. And we know already that on day one there was two coins. The two coins doubled to four. Four coins doubled to eight. The eight coins doubled to 16. Doubles to 32. Doubles to 64. Doubles to 128. Doubles to 256. Doubles to 512. Doubles to 1024. Doubles to 2048. Doubles to 4096. Doubles to 8192 doubles to 16,384, doubles to 32,768. Now, what is going on here? Basically, whoa, that's not good. Not sure what happened there. There we go. Yikes. Our n is basically equal to 2 to the d power. How do we get that? Where's that come from? Well, 
2 to the first is 2. 2 to the second is 4. 2 to the third is 8. 2 to the fourth is 16, and so on, and so on, and so on. Now, creating a graph um, makes this incredibly interesting and a little bit difficult, but that's okay. Um, we'll do our best here and forget the rest, but um, D, well, we're not going to forget the rest. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Our 12 will be there. And then we're going to try to count up this axis by about 500. So 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000, um, 4,000. Now, what ends up happening here, when you're at day 7, you're at 128, which is kind of down here. Day 8 is 256, which is kind of here. Day 9 is 512, so we're kind of creeping up here a little bit. Uh, day 10 was that 1,024, so we're kind of up to 1,000. Day 11 is all of a sudden up to 2,000, and day 12 is up to 4,000, so boom, it jumps up. I mean, you can kind of see here this nice little curve going on here. Now, it's, it's, you can't show the exact numbers um, on the axis because no one can show 8,000 on an axis when you're drawing by hand or even with graph paper. So, but you can see kind of the curve taking place here, and that's kind of fun. At least, I think it's fun. At market, three and a tenth pounds of peaches cost $7.72. How much do the peaches cost per pound? Round your answer to the nearest cent. So we're going to take this at $7.72 divided by 3 and a tenth pound because we want to get this down to 1 pound. Well, if you take $7.72 and divide it by 3 and 1 tenth, you can do so using long division. Multiplying both these things by 10, this becomes 77.2 divided by 31. And so we have 77.200 divided by 31. Bring your decimal point up here. Uh, 31 goes into 77 about two times. You subtract 62 away, and you get uh, 1, 5, and bring down your 2. That's going to go in about four times, and you multiply that out, and you get a 4 and a 12. And so now you're at, let's see, um, 8 and 2, so you're at 28. Bring down another 0, and 31 goes into 280 nine times. They have the 9 and the 27, which is 1. Bring down a 0. You're going to have to bring down another 0 and have a 0 as a placeholder. Either way, it looks like now we're at $2.49 per pound. Andre, in question 6, set up a lemonade stand last weekend. It cost him $0.15 cents to make each cup of lemonade, and he sold each cup for $0.35. Cents. If he collects $9.80, how many cups did he sell? Well, if he collected $9.80, we can take $9.80 and divide that by the $0.35 cents he sells it. If we're using long division here, this would become 980 divided by 35. So 980 divided by 35. 35 goes into 98 about two times. Left with 70. Subtract everything away, you're left with 280, and that goes in exactly 8 times. 8 times 5 is 40, and then you're left with the 28, and you get 0. So how many cups did he sell? 28 cups. How much money did it cost Andre to make this amount of lemonade? We well, sold 28 cups. So if you take, in this case, 28 
and multiply it by the 15 cents. 28 multiplied by 15 cents. Same thing as 28 times 15 for a moment, because this was in the hundreds place, don't forget, and we'll get to that in a moment. 40, 14, 0, 8, 2. You get this 420 initially, but this was in the hundredths place, so it'd be 4.2, zero, which is $4.20. How much money did make in profit? A couple of different ways of going about that. I think the easiest way, if it collected $9.80 and it cost them $4.20, just Subtract. And when you subtract, you get $5.60 in profit. That's it for this practice problems review. Uh, a lot to this. Good luck.